So I was going to make a video focused on Wildfire's Elemental Toolkit and how clever it is, but I kept talking about how interwoven Wildfire's individual systems are. From how you can manipulate the game space and use different methods of stealth-based gameplay, to the player's Elemental Toolkit and the adaptability of the AI. Turns out, it's not really possible to talk about any one of these things in isolation. This is all Dan Hines' fault. He's Wildfire's lead developer and a fellow stealth game enthusiast, as well as a games journalist. And I have to say, to see this much love for the stealth genre, its history and design influences stuffed into a screen full of beautifully rendered pixels, yeah, for me this game is worth talking about in that context. Because Wildfire is a love letter to stealth games. Wildfire is a 2D stealth game where the environment can be changed, exploited, and weaponized to serve your sneaky protagonist's needs. The plot is simple. When your village is burnt down and its inhabitants are captured, you have to find your way to the realm of the powerful Archduchess and save the lives of as many villagers as you can. Dan Hines has said that Wildfire's use of fire propagation was inspired by Far Cry 2, a game which infamously used fire as an obstacle for players to exploit or be caught out by. For Dan, there's something beautiful about trying to solve a simple problem like freeing a prisoner and ending up with this. But looking at Wildfire's game space and how players can change it to suit their needs, it's hard not to see the influence of another trailblazing game. Thief. No, not that one. These ones. The original Thief trilogy features an elemental toolkit which can be used to change the game space, albeit in more limited ways. Earth-based moss arrows turn loud surfaces into a silent carpet for you to tread on. Water arrows douse torches, creating patches of darkness for you to hide in or slip through unnoticed. As for fire arrows, well... It was 1998, okay? You had to have rocket launchers. Also, in Thief missions, your equipment is limited, so you can sometimes find extra supplies hidden in the environment. And the best places to look for water, fire, and moss arrows is in bodies of water, fires, and vegetation. So, what's my point? My point is that Wildfire takes ideas from Thief's game space manipulation and Elemental Toolkit, but kicks up the power level by several notches. Several dozen notches, actually. Instead of doing just the one thing, Water, Fire and Earth can grant a range of abilities, from defense and agility to stealth and aggression. And instead of checking the undergrowth or jumping in a pond and hoping to find the tools you need, Wildfire lets you pick up any greenery, fireballs, or water you might come across. We'll come back to Wildfire's other stealthy influences a bit later on. First, I want to discuss two of its most important components. I think it was a great design choice to make the player's abilities both powerful and readily accessible, just by grabbing bits and pieces of the environment, but there are some clever trade-offs going on here as well. I've already sort of covered the thing that fire can do in this setup, but in truth there's a lot of interplay between the player's elemental toolkit, their stealthy abilities, how the AI reacts, and how the game space can change. You're at your stealthiest when you're not using your powers. If your character picks something up, whether it's an NPC's body, an object, or a bit of earth, water, or fire magic, they can no longer hide themselves from guards. This dynamic shifts a little when we get to dark caves or snowy environments. In addition to making it impossible to take cover, grabbing a fire element will immediately make your character visible in the dark, while in frozen areas it will melt any nearby snow. The lesson quickly taught to players is, you have to choose your moments carefully when it comes to embracing and using the elements. Tempting as it might be to steal fire from a guard's torch, they will detect you immediately. 
Throwing elements within earshot or viewing distance of guards will cause them to investigate or run, depending on the effects. Then there are the local constraints within each level to consider. For instance, if a fire smoulders into ashes and you need more fire, you have to go hunting for another source of it. Because fire is, at least to begin with, the only means of offering any kind of resistance to enemies, it's also one of the easiest resources to... um... burn through. I'm sorry, I couldn't help myself. Earth is easier to come by. Vines and grasses can be picked up and shifted around to increase your cover or gain access to higher ground. You're only limited by how many of these you can find and move without being cornered by angry guards, or how many you might have to burn to achieve your goals. Once grass and vines are burnt or used for certain abilities, they can't be picked up again. As for water, if there's a body of it lying around somewhere, it's essentially an endless resource, but you have to get it to where it's needed, and this may or may not be easy depending on the landscape and how many guards are patrolling nearby. Keep in mind that holding an element makes it more difficult to be stealthy. One of the things you need to do is upgrade your powers using skill points. A skill point is acquired by throwing an element of your choice into the bowl of one of these shrines. General upgrades to things like how healthy your character is, how far you can throw elements, or how close you need to be to pick up elements, are unlocked by completing extra objectives. A single playthrough of Wildfire doesn't provide enough skill points for players to unlock all elemental powers or all of their general upgrades, and only fire is available to upgrade from the beginning of the game. While this somewhat constrains how you can spend those precious skill points on your first go around, it adds a lot of replay value through New Game Plus, where a fresh set of skill points awaits, and with all elements unlocked from the beginning, you can find new ways to customise your character's powers and complete each level. Needless to say, at higher levels, your powers can be ridiculously good, and open up new methods for completing areas, dealing with enemies, and traversing the environment. All without being detected. If you like. I've already mentioned how Wildfire draws and expands upon some of its ideas from Thief, but if you're paying attention, there are other stealthy flavours in Wildfire's design. Dishonored, another stealth game with magic-wielding protagonists, has randomised accessories you can pick up called Bone Charms, which offer small changes to specific powers, stealthy abilities, enemy reactions, healing and movement. Wildfire has meteor shards that produce similar effects. You can equip up to three, but only before you start a mission or while standing at a checkpoint. This might seem like a minor detail, but equipping the right shards becomes paramount when going for specific mission challenges like a speedrun time, and they can have some fun outcomes when dealing with enemies too, especially once you've upgraded more of your powers. Want to move faster when carrying a body? There's a shard for that. Want to silence the noise made when you throw a fireball? There's a shard for that too. In fact, there are many, many shards and I have yet to find them all, since you can only find one in each level. Like the elemental skill points, you'll have to go into New Game Plus if you want to unlock all the toys. In Mark of the Ninja, your character can be tracked by scent and detected if you're not careful around guard animals. Mark of the Ninja uses dogs, Wildfire uses bobcats. This is already an improvement. And while it isn't the first time we've had to deal with feline enemies in a stealth game, frankly, the bobcats are so persistent I found them kind of terrifying when one of them clocked onto me. A clever feature is that if you have a fireball, they're wary of getting burnt and won't try to engage you. At least, not from the front. If you turn your back while holding a fireball, the bobcat will slowly sneak up behind your character, so you need to be on your toes. Without any fireballs to hand, getting detected means it's time to run, and it's really easy for bobcats to detect you by scent. But if you knock out a bobcat and carry their unconscious body around, bingo, scent camouflage.
Batman Arkham Asylum and later Mark of the Ninja introduced us to the thrill of picking off terrified enemies, and Wildfire's AI has a glorious palette of active states, including terrified. More often than not, you're going to send enemies running for their lives by starting fires near them. But later on, if you want to get dark and menacing and play some really twisted tricks on the guards, you can definitely do that. Trust me, I've done the research. The darker cave levels are ripe for this kind of exploitation. Terrified enemies will run when they spot you before composing themselves and resuming their patrol patterns, so there is value in setting a guard up to be scared if you think you'll need them out of the way later without too much hassle. Certain meteor shards can help things along nicely. This isn't to say the guards aren't dangerous. They are. Without an element to use, your character is basically a sentient piñata. If you manage to find some grass to hide in, enemies will hack it away where you were last sighted, costing you a potential resource. If they get blocked or find their friends trapped, their default move is to slash at the obstacle with their weapons. Knocked out enemies can get woken up by their colleagues if they're passing by. A knocked out guard or animal can also be disturbed if you make too much noise around them or don't mask your scent. Abe's Odyssey is another of Wildfire's key influences, with its puzzle-oriented hostage rescuing. If you can release and lead the villagers to a checkpoint, alive, you earn a skill point for each one saved. Unlike Abe's Odyssey, the number of hostages you rescue won't affect the ending, but it's still a lovely nod to one of the earliest modern 2D stealth games, and it changes up the pace nicely. Then there's the save system, which also saves regularly in addition to when you pass checkpoints. This gives you a few choices when things don't go your way, and you have to reload without the need to push a quick save button. Gunpoint was the first stealth game I saw that did this, but I'm honestly surprised more people don't do it, given our fondness for quick saving and addiction to doing things in stealth games perfectly. Wildfire's save system can be a bit janky, occasionally loading you right back into a hopeless situation, but between it and the checkpoints, I have no real complaints. I don't have to quick save manually, I can also just restart the level from scratch if I prefer. Fantastic. There are other things I could point out about Wildfire's design. The user interface borrows from other successful stealth games, and there are some great tribute acts to the classics, but the key takeaway here is this. The folks over at Sneaky Bastards clearly recognise a good stealth game system when they see one, and it takes a great deal of balancing and tweaking to make these systems work well together. Does Wildfire achieve this? I think it does. And I've not even covered how all of this stuff can interact because it's fun to discover new things in games like this. And you will. Wildfire smoothly juggles its mix of stealthy influences and expands upon the ideas it borrows with little flourishes of genius. A lot of work and care have gone into this game, and personally, I believe it shows. This is a stealth game by people who love stealth games and the systems they can be built from. I've enjoyed what Dan Hines and the team at Sneaky Bastards have built here, a stealth game where I rode through the escalating consequences of my decisions, built and exploited a powerful elemental toolkit, and had to work with the environment more closely than I ever imagined was possible. It took time for Wildfire's systemic complexity to sink in, but once it did, I discovered a playground dense with possibilities. Even the option to burn it all down.